Long before wireless communication became such a part of our daily lives, researchers had actually established fundamental limits on the rate at which we can communicate over wireless channels. The sort of foundational theorem in this area is something that's known as the Shannon Capacity Theorem. So the Shannon Capacity Theorem for a particular wireless link sets an upper bound on how fast I can transmit information over that link. And there is no way to exceed this. This is a theoretical upper bound. I can get close to it. And one of the interesting things that's been going on for the past couple decades is we've gotten closer and closer to the Shannon limit, but I can't surpass it. So what is the Shannon limit? So uh, the Shannon capacity theorem says the capacity of a wireless link is equal to the bandwidth times the logarithm of 1 plus s over n where S is the received signal power at the receiver, and N is additive Gaussian noise. So let's try to explain this. I know this is math, it's a little scary, um, but even I'm not totally intimidated by this particular result. So, and I'm intimidated by a lot of math. So um, one way to think about theorems like this is to look at them and think about what happens as we um, sort of adjust different quantities. So the first thing to notice is that for any link, regardless of the signal and the noise, the capacity is pro directly proportional to the bandwidth. This makes sense. If I uh, have a wider bandwidth to communicate, I can send more data. So, um, and this is important because we'll look uh, at how bandwidth is allocated in terms of different frequency bands. And one of the limits on the speed of radios, for example, 802.11 radios and Bluetooth radios, is the size of the channels they operate. That channel puts a hard limit on how much data I can send across them. So, the second thing to look at is this ratio. So in uh, wireless communication, one thing you'll hear about frequently is signal to noise ratio. And this is one of the places where this comes from. So if, and, and you can think about it as the, there is a signal that's being sent by the transmitter and there is noise in the environment. If the signal is very strong, then this term gets larger and larger and larger. And this um, part will actually keep going, right? So this can, can grow without bound. Um, However, if the noise, on the other hand, gets uh, very strong, then this uh, term will go to zero. So if as n gets big, this term will get smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually go to zero. And this whole term here, 1 plus s over n, will go to zero. Uh, sorry, will go to 1, and the logarithm of 1 is zero. 2 to the 0 is 1. So this term will go to 0, and there's no way to transmit information over the channel. So given a particular amount of noise, um, the, you know, what this says is that um, you know, if, if as the noise, so if I have a noisier, noisier environment, and there's so much noise in the environment that I can't hear the signal, then this makes sense. It means that there's no, the channel has no capacity. So if I generate enough noise, I can reduce the capacity of any wireless channel to zero. On the other hand, if I send a signal with enough power, I can, um, I can sort of increase the, the, the capacity infinitely. Now, in reality, there are sort of hard bounds on S. So wireless transmitters that are used to do LTE and Wi-Fi and other things have limits on how powerful they can transmit. And those limits are important because if your Wi-Fi card could transmit infinitely loudly, it could interfere with lots of other devices, and that interference would actually cause their performance to degrade. So there's some level at which we cap the signal uh, power of these devices, and there's also some amount of noise that's sort of inherent to the wireless environment. There's no way to make this term go away. There's always some noise on the channel. And so, you know, for a practical wireless channel, I can use this theorem to determine what the upper bound is given a transmitter that can transmit at a certain strength and given a certain amount of noise that I expect in the environment. And then, no matter what type of encoding I do, so no matter how I transmit those bits down to a waveform, I can never send more information than the Shannon limit. 
So why is a constraint like this interesting? One of the reasons why it's interesting is it tells us how much farther we have to go. So if you build a wireless system and you measure how much information it's able to send and you discover that you're only achieving half of the Shannon limit, you know that there's a lot more capacity that's still out there. You can do better. Maybe with the better encoding, maybe with some better uh, engineering on the sender and receiver, you can actually transmit more information. Um, if you find out that you're doing like 0.999 of the Shannon limit, then you're in pretty good shape because there's not very much more information that you can send with that particular system. So this, uh, this theorem actually, I think I forgot to mention, dates back to 1948. So you know, before we started to build and distribute billions of wireless devices, we already had a sense of some of the fundamental limits on their performance.